Brilliant. So, so Oscar, obviously a, a brilliant career with with, uh, with Lancashire cricket and uh, a very very successful time. But you know, the end of your career now. What are you what are you up to do? What are you up to these days? What are you up to? Well, I should have been working for the brewery, uh, which I'm out been put out to grass for a little while because none of the pubs are open, which I'm sure everybody's gutted about now. So yeah, that's what I'm up to. Working with Marston's Brewery out on the road, doing a bit of sales. Perfect, really. Sounds like a perfect job for you, knowing you as I do. <laughs> well, it has been said before, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but listen, just recently, recent things have come up and we've put lots over, over social media. And, and one of the, the, the forums that we ran was, uh, who, was, who, was Lancashire's, who was Lancashire's most underrated, underrated cricketer? And you, your name was mentioned more than more than any other name that that that, that got mentioned as being most underrated cricketer ever. Now, you know, I played with you day in, day out in all formats of the game, and you were never ever underrated uh, as a as a cricketer with the lads you played with. What what are your thoughts on this? I don't know. It's just one of them. You just get on, do your job, don't you? At the time, you don't think about how well you race and how well anybody thinks of you. You just get on with things and I don't know, it's quite overwhelming when you look back. Like I said, we had the conversation the other day. I watched the highlights from 96 final. It was the first time I've seen anything on it and the stuff on there that I just didn't have a clue. Not a clue about. That's amazing, and and that that's that's the that's the time where you know ninety six we we did the double, and you were you were an integral part. You were first name on the team sheet uh, of that of that great team in the nineties. And to say you've not seen any any coverage, you it's amazing, really. Uh, how many how many finals have you watched back since? Was that... <laughs> not, not not many, to be honest. Not not many. Who I've watched since? I've seen snippets of other games, like the Surrey one. Has been banded about recently, where we snatched a victory from the absolute jaws of defeat. Uh, but other than that, I've not, I've never really sat down and thought about watching any of the finals or any of the games we played in. No, yeah, you, and and that's that. that you, like you say, you you typify you know a, Lan- a Lancashire League cricketer. You were you, you you started your career at, at Aslindon. You broke you broke records, amateur and amateur batting records there. And and me and you were were, were fortunate to sign uh, sign in in nineteen eighty six under under the guise of, of Bondy of, of Jack Bond. We signed our contract, and you know who'd, who'd have known four or five six years later that we were. We were an integral part of winning trophies for Lancashire cricket. Frightening, really, when you look back. Like I say, I mean, you, you, we got given the opportunity. We both signed the same year. And it's one of them, I think, realistically, you sit down and at the time I just thought, what the hell, let's give it a go. Let's see what becomes of it. And it's a little sort of kid's dream to go on and play cricket for your county. And we both went on and we both put the three lions on our chest, which is way beyond my expectations. It's a kid's dream, obviously, but realistically, do you think you'd ever do that? Do you think that would ever happen? Being honest, no. And then you look back, you think, well, yeah, it's there. I've got the cap and I've got the sort of shirt sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, some great hey. days, didn't we? We had, we had some great days with some... With some great players in that era, and that you know, an era where where basically 95 percent of our team was homegrown, born and raised in Lancashire. Yeah, yeah, incredible. You know, but it was more proper good mates as well, though. You know, we weren't a team that had been sort of thrown together. We played junior cricket, as did, to be fair, most of that team that we went through. We ate Chappie, Digger. Nick Speed, Graham Lloyd, all them sort of people came through the ranks and we knew each other before we joined ranks. That's the thing. That, that's right. It was, it was, it was, it, and I always, I always relate to it. It was Lancashire's class of 92, so to speak, wasn't it? With all those players who'd come up through the system. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's probably not a bad sort of comparison in lots of ways. That team stayed together from probably. 90 to not far off 2000. We had sort of eight, nine years where we we certainly dominated one day cricket. You know, we sort of, we had some fantastic times. We had a good team, Warren, you know, but we didn't have 
in inverted commas, superstars within the dressing room. I don't think they'd be allowed to, would they? (laughs) No, we had a group of lads who just got on with things. You could say that there were stars in there. You know, you like to sort of, you was. You know, like a god back in Pakistan. But in our dressing room, he was one of the lads. Yeah. I was going to ask you about him, you know, you know, was him Akram, a world superstar, you know, hopefully we're going to be chatting with him next week, um, you know, talking about his career. But but like you said, he was one of our pals, wasn't he? He was a lad that, that had come from Pakistan as an 18, 19 year old that no one had really heard much about. Uh, and he still holds a very, very affectionate part in our hearts. Definitely, definitely. He was he was brilliant. He was, he was genius. I actually saw a snippet of his five wickets at Leicester. That was on YouTube the other day. I don't know how I came across it. Um, yeah. Technology, I must have fallen on it by mistake. <laughs> and you just watch that and you just think, genius. Yeah. Oh, just what genius. he could do with the ball. And did he, did he, I mean, this, the art of, you know, we talk about was and we talk about the art of reverse swing that you are a really, really good exponent of bowling, uh, bowling at the death at the end of an innings, using that reverse swing, probably no better bowler other than other than Waz was you when it came to bowling at the death and bowling Yorkers. Did he help you? Did he help you along the way on that? He did once. He told us what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting right you know, David Hughes, who was captain at the time, because I bowled about three wides in next at last over, and he. You know what yours is like, not very complimentary. And I want to say exactly what he said, but uh, <laughs> wasn't very complimentary. And basically told me to pull my finger out and concentrate on what I was doing. Yeah. And Waz was down at fine leg at the time. And he was shouting away and shouting, well, what's he want now? Skipper, skipper, bring me to mid on, mid off. And he came and stood at mid off and he went, hold the ball like this, do this and do that. And I'm saying, you're going to get me sacked here, Waz. <laughs> you're already, you're already. No, no, trust me. And I bowl this next ball, and he's like, started as if you could have started at first slip. And I'm thinking, this is going to miss the strip. This is just going to be a disaster, this. <laughs> and then let it go, and it swung in real late, and batsman just let it go, and he just clipped his off stump. And instead of celebrating, I just stood there as if to say, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> they are a reverse swing and it was a rough surface. The ground was rock hard. It was like concrete and, and it was really conducive to bowling reverse swing. But let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the atmosphere. Those time in the 90s playing in front of full houses. Very special time for, for lads that had come from, from the Lancashire area. Oh, fantastic. You know, just something, like I said before, that you only ever dream of, really. Mm. It's one of them. You, yes, that's what you want to do. I remember going down as a kid. You watching... moved into the garden now, have you? You got the barbecue on? Not yet. No, the missus has just arrived now, so the dogs are going bananas. <laughs> right, got you. <laughs> Come inside for a bit of peace. That's all. A bit <laughs> uh, no, I would remember going down, sitting on outskirts on on the edge of the outfield when you were allowed to do that. Yeah. Or watching sort of Bondi's team. And it's one of them, you just think, I'd love to do this. I'd love to do this. I'd love to be a part of this. And I also remember going down watching England at West Indies when Viv got, when well, when Viv blasted that 170, were it? Whatever he yeah, got. Yeah, 180 he got, didn't he? You know, I was there on for that one. You think, oh, what would it, what would it be like to play in front of a crowd like this? Mm. And then you think about, you look back and you think, Rose's games, full house. Semi-finals at home. And we had a few of them, to be fair, as you will very well know. Yeah, definitely. Against sort of Yorkshire. You know, again, stuff like that, just incredible. Incredible. You know, you know we'll, we'll finish on, on a couple of things. You know, you, you see these batsmen now, innovative, playing ramps and playing scoops. And, and you hit the ball in some, um, in some, in some funny places when, 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 you, when you went to bat and scored lots and lots of important runs for the club at the, at the back end of, of innings. Is, and and you, you did play some, some unconventional shots in them times. How do you think you'd have gone on in 2020 these days, both as a batter and a bowler? I think... I think we both do quite well in that. I mean, 
you keep wicket, you keep wicket, you keep wicket, don't you? With all due respect. Yeah. No. Neither of us were particularly conventional. De- definitely. So, yeah. But I think that's what it, the game's about now, isn't it? Is you find, and I don't think it's changed dramatically. People play different shots, but people are still looking. Where's there a gap? That's where I'm going to hit the ball. Irrespective of who's balling, where they're planning on balling it. You picked out a time. I mean, I remember scoring some at Scarborough. Mm-hmm. And early on, and that's how far back I'm going, and his side bottom was balling. God, that is a long time ago. And I just walked across all the lot and hit him behind square at the death. And I think I did that two or three times because there was nobody there. Yeah, I remember. And it came off the bat and it works and it's fine. You look an idiot when it doesn't work. You know, but I think. I don't think it's massively different now. I mean, you speak to Joss. I mean, Joss is no better exponent to playing different shots than that. Yeah. What's he, you know, I would hazard a guess and say for sports to him and say, he's looking at gaps. Where's there a gap? Where can I hit it? And how do I get it there? I, I think I think Josh Butler would be would, would agree with you wholeheartedly then, and and it's it's a case of these days where you've got to get in, you've got to you've got to throw in. Oh, that, that, there's a little granddaughter, brilliant! That's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic! Yeah, and he would say he's looking he's looking for uh, he's looking for for areas to hit, and and it's just cricket. Cricket is a is a, is a simple game, and it comes down to the to the to the same skills that have probably been around for a long time, which you were a great exponent of. Yeah, but I think that's, you just exactly hit it on the head then. It is actually a simple game. And I think it's made more difficult by people coming up with theories. The big, more simple thing is from a batsman, see ball, hit ball. Mm. You know, and that's as simple as it can be if you want it to be. You know, and it, it's like I bowled at the death, right? And I bowled at the death. Ended up being all right at bowling at the death because I did it for probably the best part of 10 years. What I did was, in my eyes, quite simple. I bowled at the stumps, tried to bowl it as full as possible. Now, I get that the game changed during my time, but I enjoyed bowling at the death because I got wickets. Yeah. And whoever bowled at the death at the beginning of my career got wickets. Because people either, well, didn't play creative shots he just tried slogging it basically yeah and if you bowled straight you hit the stumps yeah people either backed away walked across or stood there and heaved across the line yeah more of in the block hole or the right area than not then yes you got wickets the latter end of my days if you bowled six perfect yorkers you probably went for six runs and got no wickets and that was the reality and the difference of it people Sort of worked out. Well, if somebody bowls a perfect ball in inverted commas, we'll get one off it. Yeah. You're happy to let him get one. Yeah. Mm. You know, whereas, that's... whereas these days they get they get on one knee, they get on one knee and scoop you over the keeper's head for a full oh, ball. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think you've got to have that little bit of variation, but I still think you what you're looking at doing is what I would call damage limitation. Yeah, fair comment. Because you're not going to stop people scoring runs. You've just got to, in my opinion, limit the areas where they're going to score in. Yeah, brilliant. If you ball, if you ball it in the block hole, still not that simple to scoop you or hit you over the keeper's head because you've got to get it absolutely perfect. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's a lawful toss. It's straight on the face of the bat. Can you get any power in that? I would suspect not, because you haven't got any leverage to get it over there. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And we're not, not going to take much more of your time, Os. But you know, just in a in in a, in a if you have to paraphrase uh, having the career you did and uh, and being being fortunate enough to to, to walk down those uh, those famous steps onto the famous ground, you know, what what would you what would you finish finish this conversation with? If I had the chance to do it again, I'd love to do it again. Brilliant. Brilliant. Given that opportunity, everything being the same again, whatever era, whatever decade, would you do it again? Yeah, I would. I'd loved it. I loved every minute of it. 
Brilliant, yeah. And that that's that's great. They're great to hear. And you'll always you'll always hold a, a very, very special part in 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 our members, our, our supporters' um memories of the of those great days at Lords and, and that very, very successful team in the in the nineties. And we we thanks thank you very, very much for taking the time and, and chatting with us today. And you know, I'm sure you you agree that it stay, staying safe is really, really important at this time. Definitely, definitely. You know, it's hard work, isn't it? You're being sort of trapped away and you're isolated and one thing and another. But at the end of the day, look at the bigger picture. You know, we've recently lost our chairman, mm. sadly, very sadly, a great man, Dave. And uh, like I say, we're prime ministers in isolation. He's in intensive care. There's, it's not picking anybody out at random. No, it's not. There's mm. no immunity anywhere down the line because of who you are, what position you hold or anything. And I just think the safer we all try and stay and just endure what we're having to go through in isolation, then the quicker we can all get out of it. Yeah, and the quicker we can get back uh, get back watching some recreational cricket, watching some professional cricket and getting on to life again. Absolutely, and keeping me in the job. <laughs> right, Oscar, great great to speak to you, mate. Always great to catch up with you. Love, love to the family. I hope everything uh, everything stays safe and uh, and we get through there. And I can't wait to come to your house and sample that bar at some stage. Be a pleasure, Paul. I've got my own bar you can come to as well after that. Correct. Yeah, I believe I believe you're opening up a new uh, a new bar in in Accrington. Yeah, we're, everything's in the pipeline. Obviously, we're a bit lost at the moment as to when anything's opening. So we're flowing on, trying to get ready, and then hopefully everybody can come out and have a nice few party weekends when we can all go back out. Brilliant, mate. Well, thanks very much for your time, pal, and you keep yourself and your family safe. And you, bud. Take it easy. Cheers, Ask. Cheers, Warren. See you, pal. See you, pal.